DIY is by Dar, Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by Corey from Desert DIY. This is the ugly duckling I need to turn into a swan. After I glued it, I had to really reinforce it. When I took the clamps off, I had to press on it all over just to make sure it was solid, and it was. I turned it over to check it as well, and I decided that I really needed to put one reinforcement board on the bottom where it was off not only vertically and horizontally as well. Lots of mud. Lots of mud and I really prefer to use Gorilla Wood Putty. I hand sanded around the sides but of course on the top we're going to use the Surf Prep with 100 grit. I did have to fill this table three or four different times to get it leveled up. There's the board that I put on the bottom. I'm, I'm kind of going fast on this because I want to teach you all how to paint rocks in six easy steps because I know you can do it. I'm going to go ahead and put two coats of boss on the whole table. Now this challenge is a really fun challenge and there is going to be a lot of very talented furniture artists in this competition. So I'm going to leave the uh, playlist link in my description as well as Corey from Desert DIY the link to her channel. Now time to paint it and I use two coats of silk all-in-one paint in the color Hampton Olive. Once it was dry, time to use some stencils. Some koi fish, of course. Use some stencil spray. I used all-in-one paint again, this color called Endless Shore from their silk line. Once your fish are dry, here is step one for creating rocks and I used some acrylic pens to make quick work of this. Look at some rocks um, on your computer, magazine, go outside and take a picture, but all you're going to do is make some round circles, some oblong circles, and they are going to be smaller down in the very center of where your fish are at to give you that depth 
and how I kept these in line to make a perfect oval. Sometimes I would draw a bigger rock on the outside edge and I would kind of gear like four inches away from the outside edge and then I would know that was where my limit was and then I would draw the circles inward. All the rocks are on and I'm doing a little bit of touch up on these fish. Now I'm going to paint these fish and kind of like paint by number, fill in the blank. You can be as creative as you want with these fish. different color on these fish. I used a metallic pen, gold and silver. Now, step two, fill in your rocks. Pick three, four, five colors that you want your rocks to be and just fill them in. You don't have to have a solid color. If some of that bottom shows through, that's fine. That's just going to add layers for the character of your rocks. And even the direction that you put your paint on, that can also leave some lines and grooves for some character in your rocks. So that's what we're going to do next. Sit and paint a lot of rocks. And there they are. Step three, we've got to put low lights in. So that means using some black paint. You can see on the left compared to the right where I haven't started doing it yet, where the difference is. And low lights are usually dark and they are what is coming from the back. So I am using some black paint and I have that acrylic really watered down and if the rock shows through, that's kind of what you want. And you can go in round circles. You can go in stippled speckles. Uh, anyway, going around that rock. And sometimes I even go with what I see the character of the rock maybe being. Like it might have an, um, another low area, like right there. Go up into the middle of the rock. All right, we have all of our low lights on. Now we have to do highlights. That is the fourth step. White titanium paint, really watered down, going to hit the top of every one of them rocks. And you can go in swirls, you can go in lines, you can go in stippling motion. Um, you can make some of them heavier with white. Uh, some lighter with white that just gives each rock its individual character and go with whatever lines are already on there and use your imagination.
there is all the low lights starting to look 3D. So here comes the fifth part. Go back and do some individual detailing on each rock. I use the same colors, the brown, the black, or the lighter colors, the white. I'll put dots, specks, really detailed lines throughout the rocks to give them a bit more character. It doesn't matter. There's really no rules when you're making a rock. A rock's a rock. So just go ahead and make those lines on there. Go with what you already have set down. Give a little more depth to it, a little more character to it. This rock here is a good one to use for an example. I started with just some lines around the edge and down the middle, and I wasn't happy with that. It was a little bit too white at the top, so I just went back and added just some dots and blobs of paint, and that straightened it out. On the right, you can see the details in versus the left side of the fish, and you can really tell the difference. I did a lot of fossil stones in this, so I, I will show you how to paint a fossil stone. It's just a matter of dots and little lines, and when you think about it, that's basically what a photograph is in pixels, is dots and lines of dots. So just start making little cells on the top of the stone. And when you get to the edge, kind of think, well, I know it's going to be round going downward, so put a little curve on those lines coming downward. I'm going to dot the center of each cell and then I will come back with a black acrylic pen and I am trying to put little lines almost like making stars around those dots. And this stone was a little bit small to uh, show you guys, but I think you get the general idea. And I will show you uh, some of the other ones here, and you will be able to see that really cool difference. Just a little bit further away that you go, it, it looks like you, you can just pick that stone up off the table. And then the farther down you go, then you see your little dots and your little lines.
All of our rocks are detailed at this point. Last step, step six. We need to put some black underneath these rocks and around them to give them that depth and that they're sitting on some soil. So use a black marker, black paint, brown paint, and all you're going to do is fill in between each rock. There you can see on the left they're filled in and on the right they are not. Here is the piece completed. Now I did put three coats of gator hide on the top of this table. I also put some transfers on the edges where they were cracked just to kind of help hide that area. And of course that was underneath those three coats of gator hide. So let's sit back and enjoy. Thanks, Corey, for hosting the Ugly Duckling Challenge. And please like and subscribe. And I want to thank you all for watching.